Hi people, it's Sarkovist here, and today I want to share my initial thoughts with regards to the recently announced World of Warcraft expansion known simply as Legion, which by the way, is an awesome name. We learned quite a few things during the initial reveal of Legion. We learned about artifacts, a focus on class identity, the new continent known as the Broken Isles, the invasion of the Burning Legion, the new Demon Hunter class, and the fact that Illidan is back. And in this video, I want to kind of go through a few of those things that are announced and just give my take on them. So to begin with, I'll start with the Demon Hunter class, and this got me the most excited. And I have to be honest, I did not expect it at all. Blizzard have always had a hard time balancing all the different classes that are currently in the game. And so I thought that if anything was going to be added, it would be a new race, because adding a new race just isn't as difficult as adding in a new class, which has a whole new load of new abilities. Especially with regards to PvP, that can make things very difficult. So it's commendable for Blizzard to add yet another one in, although I wouldn't be surprised if for the first few months, or maybe just one month, the Demon Hunter is actually overpowered, much like the Death Knight was. Initially, the Death Knight was way overpowered. And I think they mentioned that the Demon Hunter is going to be a hero class, which suggests to me that it's going to begin at a higher level than if you were to begin a regular class. That's what the uh, Death Knight did. And I think Blizzard would probably start you at level 100 this time, because before they started the Death Knight at level 55, which meant you had to replay the Burning Crusade content, and that got a lot of criticism indeed, it just felt like I've literally just done this, and now you're making me do it again to play as a Death Knight, and then I can finally get to Northrend. So I'd like to think that you can essentially start straight away at the Broken Isles, as long as you've got a level 100 character. I think, for me, that would be the most sensible way of doing it. Like the Death Knight as well, you're going to get your own starting zone as a Demon Hunter. It seems to be on this shattered world that looks very similar to Outland, and I'm actually very excited to go there. Funnily enough, the concepts they showed for this Demon Hunter starting zone looked better than anything they showed of the Broken Isles, just to me, just in terms of intrigue, which is pretty good because it's just going to get you off to a very great start as the Demon Hunter. And also you're going to have different metamorphosis abilities, so if you're a DPS Demon Hunter, you kind of get these sharp fangs and claws. If you're a tank Demon Hunter, you get a very bulky skin. In fact, the tank Demon Hunter looks super cool, and they haven't really done that before. The DPS Demon Hunter is essentially following in what looks like Illidan's shadow, but the tank Demon Hunter just looks fantastic. It seems like a big focus of this expansion is class identity, by which I mean, what's it like to actually be a paladin? What's it like to be a warlock beyond their abilities in combat? I feel like for a very long time, the actual lore behind the classes in World of Warcraft has been sorely lacking. It used to be that classes had a lot of class-specific quests that would allow you to unlock special abilities with regards to that class. So, for instance, shamans could unlock totems via quests, druids could unlock their animal forms through quests, warlocks got their demons through quests. Now, all those things you can tend to just unlock. You don't even have to go to a trainer anymore, they just come in as you level up. And although that makes things a lot easier and a lot more streamlined, you lose that sense of the class. I mean, I think going to commune with the spirits to become a bear gave you a lot more of an identity as a druid than just getting to whatever level and then becoming bear form. You know what I mean? It's like you lose that sense of earning your power. Especially with the uh, demons, because it used to be that you had to go to a special location as a warlock and summon a demon and then defeat it and that would grant you the demon ability. Now, you get to the right level, you get the demon. It's just, you lose a lot of that lore behind it. But now there seems to be a return to the old ways where artifacts are being introduced. And artifacts are unique weapons unique to each specialization in the game. As an example of this would be Ashbringer, and Ashbringer is unique to, I think, the Retribution Paladin. And when you begin on the Broken Isles, the new continent, you find Ashbringer in some class-based quest, like the old ones, and you go through, and it's like your companion, it, it is your signature weapon. Holding Ashbringer will make you feel like a Retribution Paladin, or if you're in Heartsman Shaman, you get Doomhammer. 
You've also got class orders where essentially rather than factions banding together, it's more like the different classes are banding together. So all the mages of the world, all the shamans of the world or all the warlocks of the world are banding together in their own little groups and they have these specific hideouts that you can go to. For instance, the shaman one is this hideout overlooking the maelstrom and that just sounds so good to me. I'm really looking forward to that. And so when you combine class orders and artifacts, I feel like class identity is going to come back in a big way in Legion and that even more than the Demon Hunter as a standalone feature, makes me very excited. In fact, I think that's the best thing they've announced so far. So I've gone through the things that caught my eye the most in the reveal. There are other things, and I would encourage you just to look at a rundown of the different features that were announced. Uh, but there was a little theory that I had. Could this possibly be the last expansion of World of Warcraft? And there's a few reasons I think this. Number one, they've decided to incorporate things that players have been asking for a long time. Uh, so one is the Emerald Nightmare. Since the beginning, since the Burning Crusade, I remember people thinking, oh, the next expansion is going to be the Emerald Dream. And, well, rather than making an Emerald Dream expansion, they've incorporated it into Legion. A similar thing for Ashara. Ashara, the Naga Witch. People thought she'd get her own expansion, but rather than that, they've put her into a raid in Legion as well. So they've incorporated two things that players have been asking for a long time for. Another thing, they're using the Burning Legion. The Burning Legion are arguably the biggest threat to Azeroth. I think the only thing you could say even rivals that are the old gods, but I think on the whole the Burning Legion are probably above them. And we're enlisting the help of the Titans, and the Titans are essentially the gods of the World of Warcraft universe. And so the question I find myself asking is, where can we possibly go from here? And that's why I believe this may be one of the last, if not the last, expansion of World of Warcraft. I wouldn't be surprised if the final patch of the game is us taking on Sargeras, with all the Azerothian heroes fighting him. That would seem like a very natural end to the game. I think if they were going to do another one, it would be another Burning Legion expansion, and we'd be going to Argus. That's all I can think of that could go on top of this. The final thing I want to say regarding this expansion, and this is not a complaint, it's just an observation, is that Blizzard don't seem to be able to leave their notable characters dead. In Warlords of Draenor we encountered loads of characters that we had already dealt with before, they'd fallen in battle, they died, and so we went back in time to this other dimension and we faced them. Now if you go back to the Burning Crusade, I think Blizzard made their first use of this technique, where a character had seemingly died, but then just came back. Why? don't know really, he's just back, and that was with uh, Kelfer's Sunstrider, and there is the now infamous quote to him saying, Tempest Keep was merely a setback. And the thing is, by bringing Kelfer's back, there was the idea that, can anyone die in this game, or can they just come back at any point? And yet again, they've done that, this time with Illidan. Now, Illidan Stormrage is an awesome character, he's got some fantastic lore behind him, the actual design of the character is superb, and with the whole Demon Hunter idea of bringing the classes in, I get why he's here. But there is that sense of, does anyone die in World of Warcraft? If I kill someone, oh, they came back through the Twisting Never. Oh, I only killed them this way. Oh, he sneaked off. Can they just work it so anyone we've killed actually came back? Or maybe Deathwing's back. Yes, we look like we destroyed him, but the Maelstrom brought his body back and now he's even more terrifying than ever. You know what I mean? It's like we've defeated these characters, but they come back somehow. It's this, uh, it, it doesn't bring a lot of gravity to their destruction when they just come back again. I'm conflicted on this idea because, yes, Illidan's a really awesome character, but we've dealt with him already. We've dealt with him at the Black Temple. So that's all I have to say on Legion for now. As always, people, thanks very much for watching and see you next time.